Hey gamers, we're back with another episode of Let's Create a Competitive Card Game. And this episode I'll be coming up with some game mechanics and some keywords. So let's get started. Okay, so last episode we went over the combat phase. So the combat phase is made up of two phases, a damage assigning and a damage resolution phase. Now, only cards with life can be declared as a target for an attack, so a class card or say a relic with life. Now, if a player does not declare a target, then it is assumed that they are attacking the class card by default. Now, in order for a card to attack, it has to have been in play since the beginning of the turn, and it must be what I am calling ready. So whenever a card attacks or uses an effect, then it turns sideways and it is exhausted or what some may refer to as tapped. Now, when a card defends, it doesn't exhaust or, or tap, it can defend as many times as it has to take damage before it is destroyed. Now, the way combat works in this game is when the turn player declares an attack, they can choose one or more cards they want to attack with and the defending player can choose zero or more cards to defend with. If they choose to defend with zero cards, then the turn player assigns the damage to the target of the attack. Now, once all attackers and defenders are declared, then the damage assigning phase begins and the turn player first assigns all of his damage to the defending player and then the defending player gets to assign his damage to the attackers. Now, every time a player assigns damage, that is a game action. So the opposite player or the opponent gets to respond to your damage assigning and if they do not have a response then you may respond to your own damage assigning. Now once all damage has been assigned and all responses have been made and resolved then the damage resolution phase occurs and all that does is all cards inflict their damage to their target and any cards that have taken lethal damage or more damage than their defense or life they are destroyed. So today I want to come up with the game mechanics and some keywords. So let's go ahead and make a section for this. And before I actually come up with the game mechanics, let's talk about the card types for the guild. So we have three guilds. We have the red, the blue, and the yellow. And again, red focuses on physical cards, blue on life, and yellow on control. So there will be one card type, and by card type, I'm referring to the status. So the status in the world, is it a warrior? Is it a wizard? So status in respect to a card type in other games. So each one of the guilds will have one specific card type. And what I want to do is, let's come over here to the world lore and let's just go ahead and let's add them here. So for red, what I'm thinking about is warriors. And I'll just, put all of these down for now. So for blue, I'm thinking cleric. And for yellow, I'm thinking magician. Now, all of these will have their own play types and I've already thought about these. So, Warriors will, will focus on what I'm going to call fearless. There's a keyword called fearless, which we will get to today. And clerics will focus on life gain. And magicians will focus on making things disappear.
And that would just be a keyword called balance. So these will be the three types for the very first set. There'll be warrior representing the red guild, clerics representing the blue guild, and magicians representing the yellow guild. Now let's go ahead and get to game mechanics. So I came up with three game mechanics and game mechanics in this game, they can be thought of as keywords, but the only difference is game mechanics aren't game action. So you cannot respond to a game mechanic happening. So the very first mechanic that I thought of has to do with the companion cards. So I remember when I was thinking about these cards, I said that these cards can only be used on your turn and they require some SP slash TP to play. And let's see. Right, so most companions only stay in play for a certain amount of time. So I was thinking that there could be a game mechanic that can be used on multiple cards. And the game mechanic that I thought of is called Temporary. And let's bold this. And so what is temporary? So temporary just means that cards with this game mechanic, they stay on the field for the listed number of turns, and then they are shuffled back into the deck. And there's something else, but let's go ahead and start writing this. So let's say cards with this mechanic Stay on the field for, let's say, the listed number of, let's say, in phases. Or let's not say on the field, let's say, stay in play. And let's say, and then are shuffled into their owner's deck. So what this means is that cards with temporary, they they stay on the field and then they go back into the deck to be played again. So remember the idea is that this world or yeah, the world of the game exists in a single moment called the now and that things outside of this specific moment in time, which lasts for an infinite amount of time. So anything out of this second can come into this moment but since they aren't from this time, they have to go back to their time, so to say, and then come back in another point in time. So we'll say essentially the deck is something that's not in this moment right now, even though it is in the play area. So now something else that I kind of thought about with these cards is the idea behind companions is that they are supposed to be powerful, and so the idea behind temporaries, it will be used on cards which do have some powerful effect, and since they do get shuffled back into the deck, there's a chance they can be reused. So one downside to sort of balance this game mechanic out is that, I'm sorry, let's put that there, and to balance this out, I thought that if a card with temporary is destroyed, before it's, let's say, counter runs out, then the card is removed from play. So that's sort of how I'm going to balance this out. And the keyword I'm going to use for remove from play for now is just going to be vanquish. So let's say if a card with temporary is destroyed before its counter runs out, Let's say the card is vanquished. And I'll, I 
Gorilla size. Nah, I bet you that, but I'll do that for these. And let's also give an example of how this would look on a card. So a card with temporary would probably look like this. It would say temporary three. And this would mean that this card only stays in play for three of your end phases, and then it is shuffled into the deck. So let's say, let's say exactly that. back into your deck. And we can also just say we could we can reiterate this. So yeah if a card would temporary is destroyed before its counter runs out. Let's say before the third turn, so it's very clear. Before the third. Let's say the card would be vanquished. And let's be specific. So a card with temporary three, this card would stay in play for three of your end phases and would be shuffled back into your deck. If this card with temporary is destroyed before the third end phase, the card would be vanquished. Or we don't even have to say it with temporary. So let's just say if this card is destroyed before the third end phase, the card would be vanquished. So that is the first game mechan mechanic. And the next one I thought about is called Lasting. So Lasting will act kind of like Temporary, but it will be a little different. So we'll say that instead of staying on the field for the listed number of in phases, we'd say that these cards stay on the field for the listed number of start phases and then they are sent to the discard pile. And I don't have any card ideas in mind, but I wanted something to kind of be the opposite of temporary. So, honestly, we can copy this just to save on some typing. And we can say, cards with this mechanic stay in play for the listed number of, let's say, start phases. And then our, let's say, sent to the discard. And these cards, they don't get vanquished. If they're destroyed, they just go right to the discard pile. And, you know, let's not put ID on here. Because I think it's, you can kind of guess what this part is right below it. So let's use the exact same example. So this card would stay in play for three of your start phases. So you kind of get an extra turn with this. As the turn you play it, it doesn't really count as being played. 
So three star phases would then be sent to your discard. And something else to point out about these is one thing that I have in mind for these game mechanics is they are specific to the owner of the card. So if you play a card with temporary and somehow your opponent gains control of that card, then the end phases are still counted on the owner's end phases and not the controller's end phases. And same thing for lasting, it's counted on the owner's start phases and not the controller's start phases. So now the last game mechanic I have in mind is something called setup. And actually, before setup, I have another game mechanic that sort of goes hand in hand with setup. And that game mechanic is called Reason. So, the way that I think that the ability point system will work in this game with these skill points and talent points is when you use these points they come back at the start of your turn so say you have five ability points so three skill points and two talent points and you use all five this turn well next turn at the start of the turn when you gain your new ability point you'll have six ability points total now that you can reuse this turn now the way in my head that I have this ability point system working is that cards that actually go into play and stay into play, they had a hard use system, which means that say if you if you play a character that costs three, now the ability points you have left for this turn are reduced by three. So if you have six ability points and you play a character, you only have three left to play other cards that stay on the in-play area. So relics, let's say followers, relics, and companions. So those cost hard points and they reduce your total points. Now to play skill and talent points, the way I have it in my mind is that you just have to have that many points total. So if a skill or a talent costs for ability points and say you have six ability points and you use three to play a follower so the hard ability points you have left are three but the total you have is six so you could play a skill that was four so when it comes to skill and talents you just have to have that total amount it doesn't mean that you have to have that amount of ability if that makes sense now I mentioned that because reserve is a mechanic I was thinking of and the way this works is that when you play a card with reserve it counts as a hard cost but also at the start of your next turn you don't get those ability points back as long as the card with reserve is in play then they are reserving those ability points so again if you have six total ability points and say you play a follower that says it reserves three ability points then your next turn those three are still reserved so you would get one more so you would only have four available but still you could still play skills and talents that were higher than four up to seven so let's go ahead and put that here so let's say cards with cards with this reserve their ability points while in play Let's say this mechanic.
and we'll go ahead and elaborate on this. So let's say while well, the card with reserve is in play, any SP or TP used to play this card is temporarily unavailable. Let's say SP slash TP used to play this card. And we'll say when the card leaves play, the reserve SP or TP is automatically gained. Let's say game bad work. So yeah, cards with this mechanic reserve their ability points while in play, which is to say that while they are in play, any skill points or talent points used to play them is temporary unavailable. And when that card leaves play, you gain those points back. So again, if you play a follower that says, say, reserve three, and it's, let's say you have three ability points, you play that follower, those three points are gone. Next turn, you gain one more ability point, so you have four total, but three of them cannot be used because your follower is reserving three of them. So you have one to use for hard cost, which is followers, relics, or companion, but since your total is four, you can play talents and skills up to four still. So now what I want to do, since it does kind of fit the pattern of uh, temporary and lasting, is this new one is called setup. I'm not sure what's going on with this. So now, what is setup? So, setup is very similar to temporary and lasting with respect to the fact that it has some number beside. Now, cards with this mechanic automatically have reserve. Let's say automatically. So these cards automatically have reserve and they have to stay in play for the listed number of start pages for their before their effect actually goes off. So again, they automatically have reserve and must stay in play. Let's say for the listed number of start pages. Let's give an example of how setup would be. So you would see, say, setup three, but also, and it's not, it might not exactly look like this on the card, but this is just an example. So let's say something said it costs, let's say it costs two skill points, and let's say two talent points, as an example. So since it has reserve, or since it has setup, it automatically has reserve, 
which means you you're automatically down as long as this card is in play you're automatically down by two skill points and two talent points and since it specifically says skill points and talent points you must have exactly or you must have at least two skill points and at least two talent points to play this card whereas if it just said two ability points you could use either skill points or And let's say, say this card would, let's say it's automatically returned. Let's say the two SP and two TP. And something I haven't really given too much thought about when it comes to cards with setup is when they're destroyed oh, let's see okay actually this works because they reserve them so if I reserve when that card leaves play the points are automatically gained back so this all works out so these are the game mechanics that I will be using in the first set now I do have some more game mechanics in mind However, I'm going to save those for when they are actually being used on cards. So now let's go into the keywords. And keywords are just short little words that take the place of a phrase. So when you see these on cards, they just mean do this instead, or they mean this word holds the place of all of these other words. So now, what are some keywords? So one keyword that I can think of is balance. So this will be one used on magicians. And all bounce means is, let's say, reads, return from play to the hand. So you may see a card effect that says, bounce two followers, bounce two followers your opponent controls. So what that means is return from play to the hand to followers your opponents control. And these keywords are basically a way to reduce text on a card. So now let's see what are some other keywords. So for the first set there will be bounce and the other keyword will be the one that I mentioned for warriors. So the way I see warriors playing is that warriors are very independent and the way that fearless will work is it will read, let's say, wow, this is the only follower you control. And I won't put reads behind all of them because that'll get a bit annoying. So let's just say, well, this is the So whenever you see fearless, there will be a hyphen and then there will be some effect. And all that means is, while this is the only follower you control, you get this effect. So, let's see. What other keywords am I thinking? Another one would be lethal damage. And this isn't really that much of a keyword, but I know a lot of games have these as keywords. So lethal damage is just any damage on a card greater than or equal to that card's defense 
board line. So essentially you can say any damage that would destroy a card, but to be more clear and direct, we'll say any damage on a card. As this damage would destroy the card. Now, another keyword for the first set is going to be Link. As I do recall for Relics, I mentioned that some Relics can even be attached to other cards. And instead of attached, I'm actually going to put Linked and highlight it since it can be a keyword. Or sorry, not highlighted, bolded. And link just means attached to a card. And I'll also note here that when the attached card leaves play, the linked card leaves play in the same. So if the attached card gets shuffled into the deck since they're holding on to equipment, it would go with them. So I like that idea a lot better than linked cards just going to the discard pile whenever the attached card leaves play no matter where the attached card goes. Because you're still technically holding on to this thing that is linked to you. Now the next keyword is Vanquished. So now, Vanquish just means, let's see, Vanquish is essentially remove this card from play, or send this card to the remove from play area. It shouldn't be Vanquish, it should be Vanquish. And I'll just say, in this card. Let's say remove some play. So these will be all of the keywords that I use in the first set. And again, I do have a lot more in mind, but I don't want to give away everything. I do want some things to be a surprise. And let's see. Let's actually add one more. And this one will be called Floating. So Floating is an ability point that lasts until the end of the turn or until the card providing it is destroyed. So think of something like you can float mana per se. So we'll say last until the end of the turn or until the card providing it is destroyed, whichever comes first.
and I'll just put in parentheses whichever comes first. And these are mainly for ability points, so you can float a skill or ability point. And something else to mention about these is they can only be used to play cards, or they can be used to play cards and effects with the exception of followers, companions, and relics. And they cannot be used for reserving. So they can't be used to play anything with a hard cost. So the main point of floating points is to maybe use higher level skills or Rather, I should say, floating points may be used. This, this may be an easier way to explain it. So they may be used to play cards and effects. With the exception. Let's say companions, let's say followers. And relics. And let's also state that floating points, let's state that they may not be used for reserve. Okay, so I think that's all for this episode. So yeah, the game mechanics to reiterate are temporary lasting setup and reserve. And temporary lasting setup, they all have a set number of turns before something happens. So with temporary, these cards stay on the field into the listed number of end phases and then they are shuffled back into the deck. If they are destroyed before the counter runs down, they are vanquished or removed from play. Lasting cards stay in play for the listed number of start phases, then are sent to your discard pile. Setup cards, they stay in play for the listed number of setup turns, and while they are in play, they reserve any cost used to play them. And once the counter goes up, then the setup card, the set up card gets its effect. And reserve just means that any cost you pay to play these cards is temporarily unavailable until that card leaves play. And for the keywords, we have Bounce, Fearless, Floating, Lethal Damage Link, and Vanquish. And Bounce is just return a card from play to the hand. Fearless is, while this is the only follower you control, you get some effect. Floating is is used mainly for ability points and essentially it gives you an extra point and you keep that point until the end of the turn or until the card that is providing that point leaves play. And you can't use floating points to pay the cost for companions, followers, and relics as they have a hard cost. And you can use the points to play other cards like skills or talents or card effects. And lethal damage is any damage greater than Light, Link just means attach your card, and Vanquish means remove a card from play. So that will be all for this episode. In the next episode, I'll go ahead and start coming up with some card ideas. So if you like these episodes, be sure to like, subscribe, and all of that other good stuff. Thanks.